can't find what we need. We get a little restless from the search and get a little worn down in between. Like a bull chasing the mad door, there's a man left to his own schemes. Well, everybody needs someone beside them, shining like a lighthouse from the sea. shelter never leave you all alone i can be the one you call when you're low whoa, whoa, whoa. brother let me be your fortress when night winds are driving on be the one to light the way bring you home whoa, whoa, whoa. Desert now, there's a cage locked around my heart. I found a way to drop the keys where my failures were, and my hands can't reach that far. I ain't made for rivalry, I could never take the world alone. I know that in my weakness, I am strong. It's your love that brings me home. Brother, let me be your shelter, never leave you all alone. I can be the one you call. When you low, 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 brother, let me be your fortress. When night winds are driving on, be the one to light the way. Bring you home, whoa, whoa, whoa. brother, let me be your shelter. Never leave you all alone. I can be the one you call. When you low, whoa, whoa, whoa. brother, let me be your fortress. When night winds are driving on, be the one to light the way, bring you home. Brother, let me be your shelter, never leave you all alone. I can be the one you call when you're low. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Brother, let me be your fortress, when night winds are driving on, be the one to light the way, bring you home. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Good morning. Good morning. Whew, what a way to get us started. Thank you guys. Great job. Anyone see God anywhere this week, the first week of Easter, that they want to share this morning with us? Besides finally seeing the sun in like a month? Now don't say you don't need it because it's quick. It's quick. He's John back with the praise band. All right. Anybody else? I keep saying I'm going to get one of those ones that are soft that you can throw around because I just <laughs> want to do that. That would be fun. Knowing that there are so many more, I invite you to keep your eyes open as we see God in the midst and as we celebrate this Easter week. So those who are here, I invite you to rise as you are able, and those who are joining with us online can click the link above and share in our worship this day together. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. Immersed in the promise of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the seas into freedom's land. In the desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts. 
giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, and the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. The peace of the risen Christ be with you always. Let us share that peace together this morning. All right, <laughs> let us pray. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us sing together this morning. Lift up our eyes. Lift 
Lift up our eyes, lift up our eyes, you're the giver of life. Lift up our eyes, lift up our eyes, you're the giver of life. Lift up our eyes, lift up our eyes, you're the giver of life. Lift up our eyes, lift up our eyes, you're the giver of life. You alone, you alone can rescue, you alone can save, you alone can lift us from. you to be seated as we hear our word for this morning. And any young people want to go with Miss Judy for We Worship? You can follow her out. John chapter 1. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testified to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us and truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse all from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Here ends the reading. Our gospel reading for this morning is from John, the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you have forgiven the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who is called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the marks of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? 
Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength, our Savior, and our Redeemer. Amen. As humans, we want to believe. But to be honest, we're skeptical. We want to believe in the risen Lord. We want to believe in all of it. Yet, much like Thomas, we want proof. We want to experience it. We want to see the good. But it's so easy to see the bad. If you don't believe me, turn on the news for about two seconds. And yet our gospel today surprises us because it surprises the disciples. There they were locked away in fear, hiding because Jesus had just been crucified, because what had all taken place, they were afraid of the people in power. And in the midst of that space, Jesus comes to them. Jesus shows up when they are afraid and hiding. Jesus is there. And what does Jesus do? Does he go, I can't believe you guys. Everything that I've told you, everything exper you experienced, and here you are hiding in the darkness. He could have easily done that could have easily shamed them. He could have easily said, you know what? You aren't worth it. I'm going to go find 12 new guys since you're already down to 11. And one of them isn't even here. Rather, Jesus enters the space and pronounces, peace be with you. Beyond his sudden appearance, to hear peace that is freely given must have been surprising. But then Jesus goes a step further. He breathes on and into them the Spirit, reminding them of forgiveness. Bless you. Now, forgiveness is a powerful act. I have seen people who have been brought to tears both by being forgiven but also by receiving forgiveness. It is this moment and this essence of being freed from the chains that bind us. But what does it mean? How do we forgive? Jesus talks to the disciples about forgiving sins and retaining sins, but what does it mean? What happens when we retain those sins? All great questions. Good job asking them. And if you were in adult class this morning, we had some great discussion on this very topic. But forgiveness is biblical. It is a reminder that God offers forgiveness to us. When we mess up, when we make mistakes, when we don't meet the mark, when we do stuff we're not supposed to, and when we don't do stuff we are supposed to, God offers forgiveness. God offers repentance with us, which literally means a way to turn from what we have done so we can do something new so we can seek to follow what God has, so we can restore that relationship that we have. It is a tenant of justice for the world around us. It is powerful because it is a reminder of what God does and continues to do in and through 
and with us. But part of that forgiveness is a reminder that when we mess up, we have to own it. So often we hear others, or we, to be honest, we do it ourselves, right? We play the victim. It wasn't my fault. We try to blame someone else. We wallow. We don't seek a different path. Can we honestly, can anybody honestly say they've never messed up? Anybody? Anybody? Don't look at you. <laughs> don't worry, Jim, I wasn't. Anyone who says that they've never messed up, let's talk after worship. Jim, never mind. We... <laughs> Yet, forgiveness is so powerful. There was so much that I found this week about forgiveness. This one says, forgiveness is the best form of love. It takes a strong person to say, I'm sorry, and an even stronger person to forgive. Forgiveness is simple and hard. Often it's hard because it's steeped in emotion. Forgiveness itself isn't emotional. But as a friend and colleague of mine says, there are big emotions wrapped around it. Forgiveness is a choice. It's an interaction. But it comes with all of that other stuff. Pain and anger, sadness, frustration, all of that wrapped together in this simple interaction of asking, receiving, offering giving forgiveness. And all of it is to seek and mend relationships. To build better, to build a stronger connection, relationship based on love. Thomas Merton said, our job is to love others without stopping to inquire whether or not they are worthy. It's not about whether a person is worthy of forgiveness, but it is a desire for us to give them that forgiveness. Now, I need to be clear. Love isn't going, I forgive you, you can keep doing what you did. Love is, I forgive you, but you need to change or else there will be boundaries put in place. Forgiveness is, I forgive you, how do we move forward from here? How do we build up that relationship that was damaged, that was hurt? How do we move forward? How are we able to let it go, yet not forgetting the pain that it caused? The living through it. The honestness of it. The reality that is important. Now, this isn't either we love the sin and hate the sinner. That's not what this means either. What it means is we truly see the person who is not perfect and realizing often that person is us asking ourselves for forgiveness, asking others for forgiveness, seeking God's forgiveness with a desire to change. Because forgiveness is as much for you as it is for the other person. It's important for both. Have you ever had someone forgive you without being asked? Have you ever had someone Say, it's okay, I forgive you. Or have you ever had someone say, I forgive you, but not really mean it? Or worse, have you ever had someone say, I just can't forgive you? Maybe you've said that yourself. This is what Jesus talks about when he says that if we retain 
those sins, we retain them, we carry that weight, and it gets heavier, not lighter. That forgiveness that we offer, that forgiveness that we seek is one that releases us, that lightens us, that reminds us the depth of love for one another and for God. For as I did here again this week, there is no love without forgiveness, and there's no forgiveness without love. It grows the relationship. It's not just marital love or the parent-child love. It is any type of relationship that we have with a human being that we can offer this grace, this love, this unending peace that God offers through the ability to forgive, through the ability to live into that forgiveness whether we are the one offering it or receiving it. But notice in the gospel that Jesus doesn't end there. He talks about letting forgiveness go. He talks about retaining it. But then he calls the disciples out, literally. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. He tells the disciples, basically, you can't stay locked away. You can't stay hidden anymore. You just can't do it. That forgiveness, that peace guides us, drives us out into the world to show that light, that peace, that forgiveness that is so countercultural in our world today. That is what Easter reminds us. Darkness, locked doors, Locked rooms, tombs cannot separate us from God's love and cannot keep us from a world that needs to hear about this forgiveness and this grace and this promise that is for all people. In Easter, Jesus shows up. The resurrected Jesus engages the disciples and others in surprising fashions, in surprising ways, and reminds them about forgiveness and God's grace and the peace that comes from all of it, of God's willingness to offer that forgiveness in and through Jesus for us, to us so that we can forgive others, so that we can be drawn to action for the forgiveness that we have and that we can do, so that we can seek to take those first steps of restoration and of reconciliation, that we can step out in hope. It is not easy. It is full of big emotions. but you will not go through it alone. We are here to walk with you through it. To walk with you in and through that forgiveness, and Jesus is there too. No matter what you are going through, no matter which side of it you are on, God is there. So that through that forgiveness, we may offer and receive God's peace, peace with others, peace with ourselves, and peace with a God who calls us and claims us and shows up in various ways when we try to hide so that we may know his peace. So who will you forgive this week? Who will you ask for forgiveness from this week so that God's peace may be shared through you? Amen.
We invite you to stand as you're able. And join us in singing Forever Rain. Let us confirm that faith together with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over here, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Your tri church cries out, O oh God, and you listen. As you drew near to the disciples, draw near to us this day. Breathe on us your Holy Spirit, that our faith is renewed, and we witness your love. Lord, in your mercy. Your creation cries out, O Lord, and you listen. Nurture trees, crops, wildflowers, and all growing things. Guide farmers, gardeners, arborists, and others who tend the soil and nurture plants into life. Lord, in your mercy. Your world cries out, O God, and you listen. Guide police, firefighters, paramedics, and other first responders to work for the well-being of communities and the dignity of every person, that no one may need to live in fear. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Your children cry out, O God, and you listen. Hear your people crying out for justice, for an end to racism and other oppression, and for a world where all are fed and safe. We pray for all who cry out in suffering or pain. Lord, in your mercy. Your congregations cry out, O God, and you listen. Renew pastors, deacons, musicians, and other staff, administrators, and volunteers who facilitated Holy Week and Easter worship. Open your hearts to discern where God calls each of us to serve. Lord, in your mercy. God, we pray for those who are struggling with pain unseen with mental anguish, with suicidal thoughts, those in unhealthy relationships, those who feel trapped. We lift up these tough issues to break the silence and to reach out to those in need, that they may know they are never alone. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Accept our gratitude, O oh God, for the lives of those who now rest in you. Grant us your peace amid our fears. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we continue with our worship and give thanks to God for what God has so richly blessed us with as we collect our offerings for this morning. As our ushers come around, you can collect there or online, and those who are joining with us online can give online or through the mail as we continue to spread far and wide God's message of forgiveness and peace in the world. And as we do all of that, let us hear our offertory for this morning. face the waves I don't want to be afraid I don't want to be afraid I don't want to fear the storm just because I hear it roar I don't want to fear the storm I don't want to fear the storm peace be still say the word and I will set my feet upon the sea 
Till I'm dancing in the deep Peace be still You are here so it is well Even when my eyes can't see I will trust the voice that speaks I'm not gonna be afraid Cause these waves are only waves I'm not gonna be afraid I'm not gonna be afraid I'm not gonna fear the storm You are greater than its roar I'm not gonna fear the storm I'm not gonna fear it all Peace be still Say the word and I will Set my feet upon the sea Till I'm dancing in the deep You are here, so it is well Even when my eyes can't see I will trust the voice that speaks rise as you are able. Let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. In the night that Jesus was handed over, he gathered with his disciples for one last meal sharing with them in humbleness God's promise anew for us all. He took the bread and blessed it and said, Here is my body, broken for you. And he took the cup and raised it on high and bowed his head and prayed. And then he said, My blood for you is shed, a cleansing stream to wash your sins away. Here Jesus offers himself to everyone, the humble and the proud, the joyful and the grieving, the pious and the profane, those who have faith and those who only long for faith, to everyone without exception. Gathered together near and far by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed it be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The table is set. Come and be fed. 
Let us prepare ourselves to receive this grace-filled meal.
Please rise as you are able. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Repeat after me. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you. Gracious to you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift his countenance on you. May the Lord lift his countenance on you. His countenance on you. May the Lord lift his countenance on you. May he keep you in perfect peace. May he keep you in perfect peace. I invite you to be seated as we share a few brief ministry announcements for this morning. And if you have any, come on forward. We know she's going to take a while, so just go and. <laughs> They're good. All right. First of all, I want to thank um, everyone that chipped in last weekend when I was sick to help with the altar care and cleaning up and so forth. I just really want to say thank you, and it just showed how this church comes together when those are under the weather. Um, also, in your bulletin is our picnic, which is May 19th. There is a sign-up sheet. Um, it is a Sunday bar where everyone's going to be able to create their own Sunday with games and prizes and just a lot of fun. This year, I will have a sign-up sheet. We are having it in the gym. Uh, last year, we outgrew the tent, and the wind is not our friend at all. So one of the games that the kids will really love has to be done in the gym. So um, I made that executive decision. So there will be a sign-up sheet for anyone that can help the day before after two o'clock to help set up tables and just get everything ready so then the next day it's ready to go. So I just wanted to remind everybody of that. And if you have any questions about helping out, see Gail. Just a reminder, um, we will be having our egg hunt after service today. Um, and trust me, there are no shortage of eggs. You can ask the confirmands who hid them during cat class. Um, so we have plenty of eggs, so please come out, hunt your eggs. Um, we also have some really awesome prizes. So each person hunting will get um, a couple slips of paper to put their name on, and we'll have some drawings for some really awesome prizes. So along with that, I want to thank Everybody who donated, um, like I said, there are no shortage of eggs. I don't know if you saw the picture, but I never want to see a plastic egg again in my life. Um, so we have some really awesome prizes. We have candy. There are some homemade 3D printed dragons, um, some bubbles and pop sockets uh, in the egg hunt itself. And then, like I said, some really awesome gift uh, baskets and Easter baskets as well for bigger prizes. So thank you to everybody who took their time and their energy and their money to donate all of those items. Um, I know the kids are going to appreciate it, so thank you. All right. 
as well. There's a new members uh, series starting, so if you're interested in that, please see me. Uh, we would love to have you join and what that looks like. So if you have any questions about that, you can see me after worship. Or uh, we do have someone who's going to be joining will be our first virtual member. So he's going to spend primarily most of his time online, but will worship with us when he is in the area. So we're excited for that as well. Uh, there are a lot of other ways to connect and enjoy. Uh, an email went out this week with new information about sharing in worship leadership. Uh, so that will be changing in the bulletin as well. But if you are interested in helping out, please see myself or you will get that email. And if you're not on our email list, you can let me know or the office staff and we will get you signed up for that as well. With all of that in mind, how about we go out singing one more? Let's do a you trade. rise as you're able and we'll go, we'll go out today singing Trading My Sorrow. to share the love of God. Thanks be to God. We go to make it known. Alleluia. Have a great week, everybody. God bless. Trading my sorrows, I'm 
trading my shame I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord I'm trading my sickness I'm trading my pain I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. 